Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Football League and our premier partner Toyota welcome you to the first preliminary final here tonight at the MCG. Would you now please join with the players, coaches and umpires as we stand for the Australian National Anthem. Burgoyne, told to go, runs himself into trouble, then out of it. Lowers the eyes, beautiful, under the chest of Franklin, wheels around in characteristic fashion. Hale is marked about 60 metres out from goal. Hale, another short pass. Three target, that 40 metres out. Jack Gunston, normally so reliable, shooting at goal. This one is on the way, no exception. Straight through the middle. Right now... Very interesting start. Hard to get a bead on this game. Hill puts it across the body. It floats down to about 20 metres out from goal. And Hale, can he improve on his last effort? Tommy made the point. He's causing some... You have to go back and try and slot one of these. Now that you've mentioned it, it is. <laughs> Here he is, 25 metres out then. Hale's kick is on the way and he puts a throw. Gee, they needed that. And they lead again, this time by two. There's no doubt they uh, they think the bit of space just inside the 50 metre arc Thanks, is the most likely target area. Selwood's so just had a frustrating start, hasn't he? Now Guerra getting it and going for it and kicking it. Gooey, eh? Just a couple of signs there from the Ge Geelong defence. Hale goes after it. Roughhead did well. Heard the voice. Spotted Bruce. Bruce goes down towards the pocket. Tracking it is Gunston. Oh, He's deep square. in the pocket. Needs something special. Well, it works out OK. That may have been his objective. He bounced at the hill. I'm not sure it was, but he kicked the goal. Moments ago, finds Hale. 65 metres out, Hale. Gunston on the move. Takes the mark. Just inside the hill. Just get the feeling that Hawthorne's legacy, the legacy of this group of players, is almost on the line tonight. Gunston's kick is good. He loved it right off the boot. Struck the sweet spot. Gets his second. It's OK. Now the pressure's on. Rioli will be dangerous here. Looks up. Can't quite get one or the other, but he gets to rough head. Down the line, Burgoyne. Should kick a goal. He does. Hawthorne right back in it. Amazing. That was the final kick, but it was the tackling pressure up at half four that turned the ball over. That Dave Hawthorne, that's the ball at 50. The Downing Thomas works the mark hard. Long ball down towards full forward. They compete about five metres out. And Roughhead, dormant for so long, stretches and takes the mark. 23 finals. It's a great CV that he has. Pops it up. Hail. Yep, hail again. What is happening, though, despite that... Is Hale ended up? They've had the last six scoring Get shots. Well, if I look at the inside 50s, they're going through a period of domination. This to give them the biggest lead of the night for them, and he's got his second Hale, and that was an important opening goal of the second half. Stratton is there, Lonigan in from the side. Bailey, the tallest man, kicks inside the forward 50. Bruce again. So at least he's getting some practice, not only on the individual but on the team too. It saps confidence, doesn't it? So Bruce, 45 metres out, has redeemed himself, puts it through. That was the old seven-point play. 
It's by a point then on the way down. Hale slapped at goal. Whoop. Lexarves is in there. Duncan whips a hand pass over the top. Oh! Collision. And that's body on body on the yeah. ball, I think. So uh, that's just hand a good pass out wide. Mackey runs into a dead end. Managed to get boot to ball. Gibson feeds it back. Mitchell measures the options decisively. Go, Brittany. Pressure, pressure. Wonderful pressure. to see. And was able just to lower his eyes and, and set up his play. Sam Mitchell up to 24 possessions now. He's been superb, but so far still not enough for the lead. Just to pull it back to a point. Burgoyne's kick is on the way. That's better. Kept his nerve. They've got two. From Johnson. Back to Saul. Corey tries to corral him. Gunston so important. Banging back. Hail for Rioli. Yep. Paid. Oh, 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 what? Well paid and then the advantage. Was the Unbelievable. Course. How could that be advantage? Here's the mark to Rioli. Paid by the umpire. Yeah. And it was a mark. Yeah. And I don't think Rioli had any idea that it was paid a mark. So... Oh. Foot. And then... Shields has got to be careful. It's out on the fall against the Cats. And it's a Hawthorne kick. Off to long. Okay, sure we're going to have to throw it in. Because okay, I don't know who's coming for that. Okay, so throw it in. Well, it's a Hawthorne kick, but that's, uh, they can't use the video there, can they? Got the rub of the green here, the Cats. A couple of big decisions okay. going there. Suddenly, the future looks a lot brighter. Duopolo falling to the ground. Sewell drives inside the forward 50. Franklin going back with Lonigan. Lonigan did well to get a fist. Off the ground by Franklin. Great work by Bruce. Clever Bruce, isn't he? He's going to have to kick two or three, I reckon, Franklin. I mean, out of necessity now, they have to play. Fifty over the top, almost Gunston arriving quickly as Kelly tackled. Prestonson, well, he found a way through. Gets a hand pass to Bartell. Live ball in the square. Burgoyne applies the pressure. As a result, Hill with a chance. Hill puts it through. Wonderful work by Burgoyne. Forced the error. They've been a great last quarter team, Hawthorne, this year. They've won 18 last quarters, Geelong have won 11. Just good team defence there by Hawthorne. Hill was there, Guerra was also covering the release. Try to slow it down, you have to quicken it up. G. Lewis was good. Mitchell's kick to a paddock now. Massive here. Rioli taking off. Lonigan still with Rioli. Real chance. Hawthorne are in now. Rioli pinpoint, kick the full forward. Burgoyne with Mackey. What a big play. Burgoyne gets it back. Gunston's got four. And they're coming now! One of, the, one of the rare occasions where it's fact they got caught offside in a sense, the uh, Geelong defence. They got caught up there. But Hawthorne with a little bit of momentum now. They're dominating the field play. Franklin leaving it for Mitchell. Mitchell, clever kick, getting the ball forward. Guthrie worked it well, trouble. Hamble over the top. Bruce. Well done, Rivers, Lewis, brilliantly, Gunston, Burgoyne to put them in front. He doesn't miss. He's kicked three. Hawthorne back in front. This might be the second week of the finals off, so you're just a little bit fitter, fresher. Going into the preliminary final, is that just that slight difference? Well, the important thing is, is the game is not won. So Hawthorne to get themselves in this position have had to quicken up the game. Yeah, yeah. This game is far from over. So if they try to slow it down, you can pretty much guarantee Geelong will do the reverse. Motivation plays a huge role here. Hawks stung by last year's grand final. Richo. Defensive yeah. mark. So decides just to bang it. Oh. Hawthorne have got all the numbers. Terrible kick. Geelong have got to have more imagination than that right now. They're playing as if there's 30 seconds to go, Geelong. This... And again, oh. they just go straight up the ground. Stratton over the top. What a wonderful mark. Need uh, composure. A couple of big hearts. Ooh. They've lost it, Geelong, haven't they? Yes, yes, yes. It didn't look like they think there's... Across seconds. to Selwood. The big names get busy. What can they conjure here? Up towards the wing, Trestenson to Kelly on the overlap. Kelly towards half forward. Bartell goes back. 
Keeping his footing there, doing brilliantly was Gibson. Comes away from half-back, spots some teammates. Mitchell, Kamikaze, Camden into Lewis. The hand pass comes forward, down towards half-forward from Whitecross. Overrun down there by Hill. And eventually behind him in his wake, there's a scramble. And pilots them play. Mitchell gets a hand pass to Birchall. Birchall coming quickly was Vargo. Kick down towards the 50. Up goes Taylor and gets it out of bounds. And both sides will regroup. A minute 33 to go. 37 disposals, Mitchell, just as he did earlier this year. Three games against the Cats. 37, 36, 37. Geelong, one last chance. They've got to get it out of here. Back it goes to Mitchell. Make it 38. And a mark. Back to Mitchell again. Can they turn it over? Saul. Twisting. Turning. Puopolo. Breaking Taylor's tackle. Getting it to the pocket. Gunston's kick. Right to full forward. No mark. Oh, that's no the worst result. Yes, they didn't want a point. Got Berg on behind play. They're just ready for the one that comes out at most Hawthorne. Can't be a draw. We know that. Johnson's kick's brilliant. How did he do that? Play on call. Oh, and now free kick to Motlop. Surely umpire. No. Johnson gets it from Sirwin. Stevie J floating to centre half forward. Varco still with Varco. This to tie the match. He's missed. Oh. He's missed. He's been a luxury in the finals. Well, <clears throat> the Kenneth Curse, eh? Five points, half a minute to go. Burgoyne, wonderful game. Short. Hodge. About now. Players would know now there's only about half a minute to go, so Hawthorne would know that. Geelong would know that. Hodge will go for distance around the outer side and close to the boundary line. Packers symbol out there. Hodge Adley, first hand to it. That's an important ball. Hale to Shields. We're down to nine seconds. Yeah, out. Hawthorne on top. Huopolo's got it. Hand passes to Roughhead. Get the hearse for the curse. It comes down towards Rioli. He'll mark and kick after the siren. I don't think the umpire has heard the siren. It's going. They've won. Hawthorne have won in a stunning game of football at the MCG. Hawthorne to the grand final. What a match. They've raised the bar yet again, these two clubs. The former Prez is very happy. That man is heartbroken. So gallant tonight, Geelong. But Hawthorne will play the winner of Fremantle and Sydney. goals 8 to 1-1 one, one in the last quarter they win by 5 points as they did last year in the prelim final, the curse has ended Richo well Sammy, it's over mate there's been so much talk of this curse and it's over, this looks to be a bit of a relief about the boys out here yeah I guess uh, it's a bit funny because it's hopefully the end of one chapter and the start of something new we can't dwell on it, can we we've got something bigger and better to do next week Three quarter time, they're, they're 20 points up. What was the message in there from Clarko? What did he tell you guys? Have faith, we'll keep coming. Their third quarters have been great all year. We tried to restrict them, we couldn't do it. They were just too good for us in that quarter, but just shows great belief. Even the first half of that last quarter didn't go our way. Some things went their way, but shows the belief we've got at the moment, and we're going to take that into next week. And there was some great willpower shown, I thought, in some 50 50 contests like Stratton's mark. Gibson won a one-on-one -on -one out here in the back flank. Just great individual efforts. So many blokes put their hand up today. Blokes were sore. Blokes, you know, had tough games early in the game, but everyone just stuck with it. So much faith. So many good players that just stood up, 
didn't have an obvious best on ground, but just everyone does their bit, and that's what made us a good side, hard to beat. You've seen that in the last couple of set of bounces, you put all your, your real talent forward, you didn't rotate your forward line. Was that something you were conscious of on the ground? No, I wasn't aware of it. We knew we just got to get it in there enough. Even the last few minutes, we probably bonded in too much, gave them chances, but we made the most of our most of that last chance, and we, we get the win, but it wasn't pretty, but too tired to think about it, really. Well done. You had a great game yourself. Thanks, Richard. He was magnificent. He's had 37, 36, 38 this year. He averages over 32 in the 11 games he's now played against the Cats since 2008 Grand Final. Varco, the big miss. It's hard, isn't it? It's a tough game. Down to you, Tim. I wish Sean Berg on. And Sean, what were you thinking at three-quarter time? You know, um, it was exactly the way we planned. We knew it was going to be tough. We knew at times we were going to be in front and they were going to be in front. And, you know, it was going to take something extraordinary to win this game. And, you know, being three goals down, it took something for the guys. You know, we really had to dig deep and trust exactly what we've done throughout the year to get ourselves into this position. And that's what the boys did. And, you know, we do, you know, you just got to admire Geelong the way they, the way they play every week. So, you know, we were just fortunate we could have a line. It was a tight final quarter. It was. It was tough. It was tight. You know, some missed goals from both sides that could have really probably nailed for both teams. And, you know, we probably took one of our chances that um, was to get us over the line. But, you know, it's, it, it's got to, you've got to do something extra, extraordinary to win these games. It's a long way back to another grand final, isn't it? It is. We, we spoke about trying to capitalise the moment and, you know, we really wanted to make the most of this opportunity. We, we let one slip last year and you just don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you've got to seize the moment and, and take the ones that come your way. And, Luckily tonight, we'll have to do that. And you can bury the curse now. You know, we haven't spoken about that uh, all week. You know, it's just another tight game that we prepared for. You know, that's the stuff externally, internally. We're just worried about what we can control. Great effort. Enjoy the week. Uh, thank you. We will too. Thanks. So Sean Burgoyne goes to a fourth grand final. A couple with Port Adelaide where he won a premiership in 04 as Buddy Franklin and Isaac smith Richo. One, a couple of prelims obviously played in grand finals. What's this one mean to you, mate? I knew it was going to be a big contest. Um, and they've, look, they've had our measure the last 11 times. I'm not sure about the Kenneth Curse, but they just wanted it more than what we did in the past. And we we said early in the week that if it's a close game, we can't fold again. We've folded too many times. Well, it was a close game, and then they got in front. You're in, you seem to have control of the game a lot, but they got out to a bit of a break at three-quarter time. Did you always have that feeling you could win deep down? Yeah, I think if you look at our last month, we haven't... It's been really even the first half against Sydney and then Collingwood, and then in the second half we were able to sort of pick the tempo up a little bit and run away. We knew they were going to come at us in their third there. Look at their third quarter against Port last week. Um, all we knew is we had to just stick to our game, um, keep fighting, and in the tight situations, just make sure we, we did the right things, and lucky enough we did. And you're able to do it without real big contributions from Frankie and, and Roughhead, and even yourself. Probably didn't have your greatest of nights, but you got the job done. Well, that's, well, that's why we've been uh, so deep in finals the last three years. It's, it's not left to one or two blokes. Um, look, our younger guys are outstanding. Gunners, when he gets the ball in his hands in front of goal, you know he's going to kick him. And then uh, Shawnee Bergwijn, that's what we got in the club. From going, to, going to the middle, have an impact, kick a few goals. It was a really good team. What do you do tomorrow now, mate? Sip the cup? Break. Yeah, look, it's the same as what we'll do uh, the last few, we played last few Friday nights. We'll uh, do some recovery tonight, a little bit in the, uh, in the morning, and then just uh, prepare next week. What about uh, Frankie's elbow? Is it looking all right? Oh, I actually haven't seen it. I'm not too sure. So if he ran out of the game, I assume it'll be all right. Thanks, Hodge. Cheers. Thanks, mate. First time since 1989 they've gone to consecutive grand finals. The big thing I reckon, Tim, I don't know if you can hear me this year, they've got the extra day hall for them. Remember they played the twilight match on the Friday night, on the Saturday night last year. That's right, they've got that extra uh, day and uh, I'm just right down here amongst the Hawthorne players at the moment. And, What's it like, Tim? Oh, they're just, it's sheer relation and the coaching staff, Al Clark, has been going around to each of the players and giving them a big cuddle or a big hug and you can just see the relief. He's just in a warm embrace there now and... Uh, Look, there's no doubt they know that they've got a whole big week to go yet, but they're just absolutely elated with the performance in that last quarter. It was a remarkable match, wasn't it? It was a great game of footy, uh, Mac. It was a really great game of football. I think we all came here tonight expecting that it was going to be a contest. We know how great Geelong have been. 
over the years. We know how much this meant to Hawthorne to get back into the grand final and get another opportunity to play off in the grand final and rectify what happened last year. And they've been able to do So we take them into the room. So Geelong give up a 20-point lead at three-quarter time. They've never done that before in any final. Four goals, eight to one, one in the last quarter. He's always centre of attention, buddy, isn't he? The elbow will be on everybody's mind this week. Twelve times they've played under a goal, but this time, this time it's Hawthorne, and yes, the curse is over.